Hello and welcome to this tutorial on preparing photos for the web using Photoshop CS 5.1 and we're going to start off by uh, talking about how to follow uh, a workflow for optimizing and saving your photographs for web. So uh, we're going to be using a couple of exercise files here but of course you can use any photograph that you want uh, to demonstrate this process. So the, what we want to do is to create high quality JPEG files for use in our website and secondly to protect the original photographs that we've taken with our cameras. Um, so we're going to use Adobe Bridge here. So I've got Photoshop open and I'm going to click on the Adobe Bridge icon to open Bridge and I'm going to navigate now to my exercise file folder or in your case you can just go to whichever folder contains your photographs um, that you've taken from your memory card. And in my case, I'm going to double click on this board.jpg so that we can open it up in Photoshop. And then we can see uh, that's how easy it is to actually open a file from Bridge. Just double click and it will automatically open in Photoshop for you. If I go back to Bridge and I'm going to double click on this file here, Surf 0508, which is a raw image file taken from a Canon camera. And if I double click on this, you can see it won't open in Photoshop straight away. It's going to open up Adobe's Camera Raw, um, which is an intermediate, intermediary software program that allows you to edit raw image files before you bring them into Photoshop. So uh, in our case, most of you will be working with high quality JPEG files, not raw images. But most uh, digital SLRs have the option to shoot in raw image format. And if so, you can use Camera Raw before you bring it into Photoshop like this. So in Camera Raw, we can see that there's a link, a, a blue link at the bottom of the page, um, which is the workflow options. If I click on that, I can change a few of these to prepare my image for web delivery. For example, I should always be working in S or GB format. Uh, I can switch my bitrate to 8-bit instead of 16-bit. And we can reduce the size of this because we don't need it to be uh, a large high definition image because it's going to be uh, displayed on a smaller screen. So when we're ready with our settings here, we can click open image uh, to open the raw file in Photoshop. And you should always, when you're working on your images in Photoshop, you should always try to work with non-destructive editing. So previously in tutorials, we've looked at using the adjustment layer um, we're going to look at a couple of other techniques here today uh, in this tutorial. So we're going to use the spot healing brush to take out some of the detail in this image. For example, the bird flying in the background. I don't want that there. So I'm going to remove it using the spot healing brush. So what I need to do is create a new layer and then select my spot healing brush. And I'm going to make sure that the sample all layers option is selected. And then just start drawing over the bird and Photoshop works out what it needs to do and removes removes the bird and replaces it with appropriate content from uh, the pixels around where the bird is, effectively making it disappear. Okay, so the next thing we can do is to use an adjustment layer on top of our image to change the photograph to black and white. Um, so you should always make sure that uh, you keep the original image on the bottom layer and just add any changes as adjustment layers or smart object filter layers and so on above the original so you always can go back to the original if you need to. As well as this you should save your Photoshop files as a Photoshop file, a PSD, with all of the layers intact. So even if you're only going to be using a JPEG in your actual website, you should always save your uh, optimized um, Photoshop file as a PSD and keep that file. So if you ever need to make any changes to the image, you can always go back to the PSD and change it and you won't lose any quality. Whereas if you try to rework the JPEG that you save, you're, you're going to lose a substantial amount of quality each time you save it because it's a lossy format. Okay, so I'm just going to save the PSD into a new folder here called Source Files. And the next thing we need to do is just to talk about how to resize our photographs so that they're a suitable size for web delivery. 
So I'm going to continue working on this Surfo 502 uh, PSD file. And I'm going to make sure that the rulers are switched on. If they're not, you can just press Control and OR or Command OR on a Mac. And then just make sure that they're displaying in pixels rather than inches or centimeters. So you can just double click on the ruler itself and you can adjust, change the setting to pixels. And that should tell you uh, the width and the height of your image. Um, and what we want to do now, we can see that this image is far too large for what we need uh, in our website. So we're going to go to image size, so open the image size window and make sure that resample image is checked. Make sure that constrained proportions and also scale styles are both checked. So just tick all those boxes at the bottom. And then from the drop down menu at the bottom as well, you want to choose bicubic sharper from this drop down menu because that's the best format. When you're scaling an image from a large size down to a small size, it's going to work out the best uh, quality image for you with bicubic sharpen sharper. So we're going to change the height of the image to 200 pixels and you can see that, uh, that the width changes automatically um, and also the size of the file is going to be reduced dramatically because the photo that we're working with is going to be much smaller than the original. The resolution here in image file image size is, uh, is only relevant if you're actually going to be printing out the photograph so we don't need to worry about that as we're working for a screen here. And once we tell Photoshop what size in pixels we want our image to be, then the resolution uh, doesn't matter to us in this case. So when you're ready to go, just choose, click OK, and then choose File, Save As, and save this PSD file into a new folder called Resized for Web. So the last step of our workflow is that we're going to actually sharpen the photograph before we save it for web. So we're going to open up a new file here, wipeout2.psd, or you can work with any photograph that you're, you've got on your hard drive. And it's always a good idea to sharpen your images before you put them on the web, just because of the way that they will be displayed on, in various screen resolutions. It makes it easier to see the detail of the image. So what we're going to do is hold down the Alt key, just select the top layer first of all, and hold down the Alt key and then click on Merge Visible from the flyout menu. And that will create a composite uh, layer of all of the layers underneath it. Okay, So now we've got a, a layer on top, which is composed of all of the adjustment layers and everything that were in the original. So next we're going to open the filter menu and we're going to choose convert for smart filters. So what this does is it allows you to add filters in a non-destructive way. So normally if you add a filter effect, it's going to alter the original image. By, by using this tool, which was only recently added to Photoshop in recent versions, smart filters, it allows you to add these filters in exactly the same way, but you get to keep the original image in its unaltered form. So very useful. And so again, once you've switched this into a smart filter object, it becomes a smart object. Then go to your filter menu again, and we're going to go down to the sharpen category, and we're going to choose smart sharpen. You could choose unsharp mask as well, but smart sharpen is actually slightly better. It gives you more options, and you can kind of see what you're doing more easily. So make sure that the more accurate uh, box is checked and that Gaussian Blur is selected from the drop-down menu there. And what I'm going to do here is just increase the amount and the radius of the sharpness to the extreme right so that we can just illustrate what happens when we sharpen the image. So what, what actually is happening when we're sharpening? Sharpening basically looks for the edges of high contrast in an image, in other words, edges that have almost black or almost white edges, that's shadows and highlights. And what sharpening does is it makes the light edge pixels lighter and it makes the dark edge pixels darker. So uh, we can see here what's happening in our image. Um, the radius actually affects the pixels around the edge pixels. So in most cases you're going to want to keep the radius relatively low unless you want to impact on all of the pixels 
around the rest of the image as well. Um, so if we go to the advanced tab in the Smart Sharpen window, you can also control specific shadows and specific highlights separately if you need to get into that much detail in your particular photograph. Obviously it depends on the image uh, itself what you need, you, what you might need to adjust in terms of sharpness. So let's have a look at the before and after here. We can just play around with the shadow and highlight effects there. And when we're ready to go, just click OK. And we can see the before and after effect of sharpening on the image. And also, you'll notice in the layer, there is a mask icon there. So what we can do is just select that and then switch our paintbrush to a black color. And we can start painting on top of the filter mask. Um, so if we only wanted to sharpen the surfer himself, we could just black out the rest of the image and it would create a mask, uh, a filter mask for us. So only the white part would be sharpened. Okay, so you can get some very nice effects. It works great for portrait photography if you only want to highlight the eyes or the mouth or the nose, for example. Um, and when you're ready to go, just save the PSD file into the source files folder. And finally, we're going to optimize this image and save it for web as a JPEG. So just go to save for web and adjust your settings so that you're happy with the file size and the quality of the image. And click Save, save your file. And that's the workflow for preparing photographs for web in Photoshop CS 5.1.